Hey everyone! We've done a few videos on setting up nodes to assist in texture and object animation. If you've seen this video, we went over how to animate objects by keyframing the visibility, and in this video we made it a little easier with drivers and some math. But now there's a significantly easier way to achieve something very similar using geometry nodes. And this can be used for all sorts of things, like easily switching a character's weapons and armor, or animating a character that uses different sculpted face poses. Judging by your comments, a lot of you are interested in creating models for video games, so it's important to note that Geometry Node systems don't export to any other engines. This will mostly be for animating within Blender, or possibly used as a tool to see how all of your objects fit together before exporting them. Geometry Nodes are very versatile. I'm positive there's hundreds of different ways to set this up. I'm just going to cover two different ways to achieve roughly the same thing. The first, and arguably the more complicated, will be a setup that ignores object hierarchy. So if you have all of your objects grouped together in a certain way and don't want to reorganize them into new collections, this will work very nicely. Here's the Link's Awakening model. We're going to be using him since he has a bunch of equipable swords and shields and clothing options. Start by disabling the viewport and render visibility of all of the swappable objects. And since I definitely didn't forget to record this the first time and this is my second go, uh, I already have all of mine disabled. Just, you know, click the little eye and camera next to each of the swappable objects. He's also got some flippers, so we're going to set this up to switch between boot options as well as left and right hand options. So now we're going to start building the Geometry Node system at the World Origin. My Origin is in a weird place, so I'm going to hit Shift S, Cursor to World Origin. Now let's add a plane to use as the base for our Geometry Node system. Shift A, add a plane. Also make sure your object's scale is the same as the objects that you want to instance, or it'll get real funky real quick. Now we're going to turn this plane into a single vertex at the world origin. Tab into edit mode and switch to vertex select. Also I'm a real quick turn on screencast keys then you can see all my frantic button pushing down here. Now hit M and merge at center. The easiest way I've found to have all of my objects line up properly is to have their origins also at the world origin. You can do that by applying your object location. Hit Control A and choose location. Okay, let's go into the Geometry Node Editor. Make sure you're selected on the plane or whatever object you're using for your Geometry Node system. And hit New here. Hit Shift A and find an Instance on Points node, drop it here. Actually, real quick, I have to disable the boot's visibility. And now Shift drag them into the Node Editor. Connect the Geometry output to the Instance socket and boom, we're done. Just do that for the rest. End of tutorial. I'm just kidding. Something that's pretty cool is that if your objects are rigged, they'll still be controlled by the armature even if they're being instanced by the geometry nodes. That's super convenient, really helpful. I, I just love Blender. I love Blender! Now let's set it up so we can swap the boots for the flippers. So shift drag the flippers into the node editor. If I connect them instead, they'll show up instead. We want to be able to switch between these two easily. So let's use a switch node. One object goes into the false input and one into the true. Connect it up. And now if we flip this switch, it changes between the two. The easiest way to control this switch is just to connect this empty socket to the switch. And now our geometry node has a value that lets us swap between the two options. Let's box select all of these nodes and group them together with Ctrl G for organization's sake. Hit tab to exit the node group. If we go down to this group tab while selected on the group input node, we can change the name of our custom socket. If this side menu isn't open, you can toggle it with N. So this is perfect for something with two options, but what if we have any more options? We can still use the same basic idea, just with a few more additions. Add an instance on points node. Add a join geometry node so we can add these two chains together. We're going to start working on the left hand weapon options. I actually think it's kind of cool that Link is a left handed swordsman in almost every single game I've ever seen him in. It's neat. It's different, right? It's just a little different. So I'm going to shift drag all of my left hand stuff into the geometry node editor. Make sure the geometry socket is connected to this instance on points node as well. Oh, it's like 93 degrees in here right now. And the air conditioner makes too much noise. It's too hot. Organize these objects however you want, preferably in the order that you want to be able to choose them in. Add a switch and connect it up. Actually, I want the default option to be an empty hand. So I'm going to put the first object in the true socket and leave the false socket empty. Now duplicate and daisy chain some switch nodes until all of your object options are connected. Now we can activate each of these objects with the corresponding switch. 
If you've seen any of our How to Animate Faces videos, you might be able to guess what's coming next. We don't want to make five more values on our Geometry Node modifier, at least I don't, so I need some way for this one socket to be able to choose between all of these switches, which we can do with math! Add a math node, switch it to greater than, switch its threshold to 1. Connect this empty socket to the top value, and connect this value to the first switch. The greater than node outputs a true or false value, which works well with the switch input. So if the input value exceeds the threshold, it'll output a value of 1 and turn the switch to true. Otherwise, the switch will be set to false. I want to use solid integers in my value fields, so copy the math node and switch it to add. Set this bottom value to a very low number and drop it here. So now the object switches to the first sword at 1. Now let's make our value also control the visibility of the other objects. Duplicate this greater than node and connect this math node to it. Switch the threshold to 2 and connect the value to the second switch. Keep doing this for the remainder of the switches, increasing the threshold by 1 each time. Now this single value will switch between all of our object options. It's currently kind of annoying to scroll through all the values, so let's change this value settings. In the group tab over here, we can change the default value of the input, as well as the minimum and maximum value. If we switch the type field over to integer, the value will only select whole numbers. And we can change the name of the value to something that lets us know what we're changing, rather than just guessing. With that all set up, I'm going to select all these nodes and group them. And I don't like having a bunch of cross lines when I can avoid it, so I usually duplicate the group input. Lastly, I want to do the same thing again for all of the right-hand options, which I'm going to do real quick, it's the same as the sword setup. So, how y'all been? Doing good? Somebody's, uh, mowing their lawn right now. Makes it really hard to record stuff. And apparently there's just, you know, like a, like a garbage truck backing down the street too, which is fun. It's fun sometimes, it's really hot. That's how I'm doing. Oh my god. I wish my fan didn't make so much noise. I wish the air conditioner didn't make so much noise. I wish it wasn't a lawnmower. This is taking so long. It's so hot. There we have it. All of our object visibility controls in a singular easy place. There's one further step we can take to make it easier for animating. Generally while animating, you're selected on your character's rig, so we don't want to have to find our object with the geometry nodes and switch over to the modifier tab to change our values. So what we can do is select our rig, go to the Object Properties tab, and add some custom properties. Hit these little gear icons to adjust the settings of the values. Use Integer and change the name to whatever makes sense. Set the maximum value to one less than the total amount of options you have, since we count zero as the first option. Right-click this value field and choose Copy as New Driver. Find the Geometry Node object and right-click the corresponding value choose Paste Driver. The box should become purple. So from here on out, we can animate our armature and the visibility of our objects without having to change what we're selected on. To animate these objects, open up the Timeline, Dope Sheet, Action Editor, or NLA Editor. Any of them will work, they each have their own uh, things going on, but that's like a whole nother video worth of info. Then to keyframe, hit I over the value you wish to keyframe. Then scrub through the frames, hit I again when you want it to change. With this setup, you don't have to worry about interpolation since all the values are solid integers. And that's all there is to it. You could also use a bones position as a driver if you prefer. There's a lot you can do to customize things to better suit your project. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Next time we'll cover a way to set up something very similar using fewer nodes and object collections. Please like and subscribe. Share a video if you want to help the channel grow, and we also have a Patreon. Thank you again. Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye! Now you guys don't have to listen to a lawnmower anymore. <laughs>